Hello everyone, hope we're all doing well. I've got another quick video I'm going to go through. This one is about dynamic effects, which is another module, but it's one that it's a bit more complicated this video, and I'm probably going to make a couple of errors in it. It's not as flashy or immediately impressive as some of the other videos, but I think it goes a long way towards taking homework out of your players' hands and reducing the amount of things that can lead to mistakes. We've all had situations where halfway through combat or after a combat someone goes, oh no, my AC should have been this or this should have happened. Dynamic effects is a module that can really help with that. Uh, the example I'm going to use is a monk because I'm playing a monk at the moment and the campaign I'm a player in, so this is all a bit fresh in my mind. Um, I'm going to make a new character. So create actor. And he's a monk, let's call him Bob Monkhouse. And he's a character. So I've just got a character sheet in here that I've done nothing else with. Let's give him a picture. Monkhouse, there we go. So we now have Bob Monkhouse, who's gonna be a monk. I'm not gonna go for the full character setup. I've got other videos that cover all of that. I'm just gonna add in the things that we need for this. So he is a monk. I'm gonna go in and add, we'll start off with three levels of monk. I'm only gonna add in the other features I know I need for this video. You obviously, and this is just limited to monk, so the the this goes as far as you can sort of think really, your imagination. Once I've set this up, you're hopefully gonna see, and dynamic effects, can be applied to features, spells, items, anything. I've not played around really with using this for magic items yet, but there's a huge amount of, um, of flexibility with this. I need to add in the feature key. I need to add in unarmored defense monk. And I'm gonna add in um, flurry of blows, patient defense and step of the wind. So we're now a level three monk, and you can see our hit die have gone up automatically to match that. Quite often abilities like this, like key, um, and like unarmored defense, get left behind. Passives, the player never uses them, so you add them into the character sheet, and that's all they ever do. Particularly things like key, Key is more like a category, isn't it? You've got all your key abilities, but because they're active use ones, you might use them, but once you add key in, it, it serves no purpose. That's what I want to change. So if I open up key, it's got the description coming through. It's got details where, I mean, this just goes through how many uses they have of it. Um, that would need to be updated every time this person levels up normally. But now that we've installed dynamic effects, we have an effect tab. All of this, this appears in everything that has an active effect. By default, it it's, you know, just looks like this, there's nothing to it. This kind of gets a, a little bit complicated. If you're familiar with, it sounds like a daft thing to mention, if you're familiar with Excel and formula, this becomes much simpler. The rules are like a basic basic logical statement that you may be used to with an if statement in Excel. I promise this does not get as complicated as code. And if you've got made it this far in the video, but now you're starting to go, oh, this sounds like it might be a bit too codey for me. It's really not. Key, as you may know, a monk has a number of key equal to their monk level. So every time they level up, they get one more key. We can automate this very easily. So I've got key. I'm going to say this is an effect that is always active. You can have ones that are only when equipped. Well, straight away, if you've got a shield that has a magic effect, you could say this effect, you put the effect in here and say active when equipped. Whenever your player toggles it off and on, it stops being a thing. So straight away, you've got a huge things like AC for shields, shields of magic effects, swords that have magic effects, or necklaces when equipped. You'll see what we can do with this. This is a class feature. They don't turn it off or on, so it's always active. And then I'm going to add in a passive effect, because you can set active ones as well. You can create a new use for an item. 
this is now this is where i'm probably going to start getting it wrong um oh one thing i forgot to mention before i start doing this is in the core part of a character sheet you've got these resource one two and three i need to call the first one key and key replenishes on a short rest we've got our two tick boxes here short rest and long rest um the system it's important for you to know the system refers to resource one, two, and three as primary, secondary, and tertiary. You'll see what I mean by that in a moment. So if I jump back into my key, it's remembered we were on the effect tab. Passive effect. This is of a category, resources. And we've got here our resources, primary, long rest, max, and short rest. Well, we want our resources primary, which is key, maximum to be. Now, plus could be, you know, when you have this item equipped. If, if our monk um, had a necklace that meant they gain one extra key, then we could set this up to be resources primary max plus one. And then whatever our max is, it's now one. We want something a bit more complex than that. We want our resources primary maximum to be equals. And then, now things like this, um, we need to find online. Now, there's an increasing number. There's an increase in sort of library for using things like this. I meant to grab mine beforehand. This is from my live character. Um, we want our resources primary max to be equals at classes dot monk dot levels and I'll click update effect and now that effect is set up the other ones I won't have to refer to um, if we go back to our core sheet you'll now see that our key has defaulted to being maximum of three it's zero because it replenishes on a rest and we haven't rested them yet so that hasn't gone on so no matter how many key this character has so no matter how, what level this character is the key will go to be the same. Let's give that a test. If I go to features and I edit his monk levels and I temporarily give him a fourth level, when I come back out and go to his start page, his key maximum has changed to four. I'm gonna go back and change that to be three again. So that's all well and good. It always knows how many key he has. And if we rest him, short rest, rest, the key replenish. To tie into this, what I like to do is go to those abilities that use key. Now, strangely, I'm not sure why, it's obviously a foundry feature. What I'm about to do, you can't do in the library over here. So if you have, say, two monks in your group, you can't go and amend this in the library and drop it in. This has to be set up in each character. I'm not entirely sure why, but I wanna make sure if I go into Flurry of Blows and I edit it, this one isn't dynamic effects. This is just core foundries. If I go into details, we've got resource consumption. We can say attribute, I think it is. Yeah, resources primary value, one. Oh, I misclicked there, sorry. So we are now saying to use this ability costs one of your primary resource again remember in here we've set the primary resource to be key so if i were to accept that when i go in now i'm going to mark flurry of blows as a favorite so it appears here when i use it you'll see the key goes down by one use it again goes down by one use it one more time if i try to use it again flurry of blows has run out of its designated attribute when we short rest, a key reappear. So we could go in and add that to all of our abilities that use key. And we've now got a situation where we don't have to keep on top of how many key we should have. The key replenish on a rest and the abilities that use it, use it. That The maintenance of that whole attribute is now no longer, you know, we can use this with channel divinity, Anything that your class has limited features of a day, uh, limited uses of a day, that are used up by your abilities, you can now entirely automate that. So that's, for me, quite a big job taken away.
a slightly more complex one. Unarmoured defence. So for a monk, unarmoured defence um, dictates your AC. And that AC is 10 plus your dex modifier plus your wisdom modifier. Well, stats are things that change, either through temporary buffs or ability score increases when you level up or sometimes effects of an item. So I want to go in and use effects to make life a bit easier with that. This works for Barbarian as well. If I go into effects, now let's see if I can remember this one without having to open it up for my other monk because that makes the video feel a bit cheap. Um, I want it to always be active. Passive effect. Category. I think AC is an attribute, if I remember right. Yep, attribute armor class. Equals. Now this should be plus at abilities dot dex. Oh, so it should be 10. And then I'm going to go in and add another one. Plus at abilities. No, do you know what? I've messed it up. Let me go back. This is how tricky I find this. It's a, Once you use it more and more, you get very used to this. But I haven't touched this in about two months. And I've just come through to try and make this video. I probably should have revised it a bit more first. So there we go. You have to forgive me for that. We go in here. I want to edit that. Now, I'm not making excuses here. They've changed in an update how this module worked since I last did it. You used to have to shift enter down to insert new lines, but as you can see here, it's now been put into a single string, which is better in a way. It's less work for you to have to do, um, less knowledge for you to have to have. So let's have a look. There is no delimiter. There's nothing that breaks that up. So we should just be able to come back in. If I close that, I'm gonna delete that and we'll start it again. So we're creating our unarmored defense monk. I'm gonna go passive effect on. It is an attribute. It is our armor class, not our armor class minimum, remember. And it's gonna be equals 10 plus abilities dex.mod or modifier plus at abilities.wiz dot mod update effect now that, do, that looks like it should be correct i'm just open it on me on uh, my other character and make sure it looks the same equals 10 plus at abilities i think i've put a extra space in there let me just fix that there we go great so now our always active AC effect should determine our AC. Well, however, we haven't done our stats yet. So let's have a look. As I'm increasing my AC, you will see my armor class is going up automatically. So if I were to have a character, let's have a look. I've now got a plus four in dex and a plus three in whiz, and that's dictating my AC automatically. So we're now in a situation where our AC is calculated immediately off our stats. Our class resource is determined by our level. Our abilities that use those resources are used automatically. And that resource replenishes on a rest. That's a huge amount of homework and day-to-day -day maintenance that's been taken away. You can make some more complicated ones. Um, I'm not going to go through the full details of this, but if I get rid of Bob Monkhouse for a minute, my monk in my campaign, uh, this is an out-of-date character sheet for it now because I've exported it off to the foundry world of the DM. Um, but he is Unearthed Arcana, and he is a Tranquility Monk, which means he has a healing pool. 
So very similar to Lay on Hands, he's got healing hands. The amount of charges he's, he has for that is his monk level times 10. Now if I were to go into his healing hands, I'm going to the effects of that. You'll see that here, the resource is 10 multiplied by number of monk class levels. So if he were to multi-class into something else, it's okay. It isn't just going off level, it's going off his monk levels. That's all I'm going to go through on this. I'd be really interested to know if you end up using this to make anything else. Please do drop me a comment because it's just more more knowledge of what people are using this for helps me as a DM, um, gives me ideas. Um, but yeah, it can be used for features, it can be used for items, it can be used for spells. Almost anything that has the edit button now has effects. So if you wanted to have, if a player made a, a pot of a boon with their packed, you know, their patron, might be when they cast this particular spell, something else now happens. When they just pull it out of thin air, when they use Eldritch Blast, they gain one temporary HP. You could put that in here. Um, it's just fiddling around with this and sorting those effects out. You'll see you've got a huge number of menus you can go through, macros it can trigger, skills that can occur or can increase and decrease. Play around with this dynamic effect. I very heavily recommend this module. Um, as ever, thank you very much for watching. It was a bit bit heavy going today's. I appreciate it. I'll try and get the next one to be a bit more, a uh, bit more flashy and fun foundry instead of hard work but helpful foundry. Um, yeah, as ever, if there's anything you want to see, any modules you want me to try out, any features of foundry you want me to make a video covering that you can't find elsewhere, just drop a comment and let me know. But otherwise, thank you very much. Take care.